My name is Jesse. My name is Seb, and welcome to the Sinners But Save podcast. And today we're going to be speaking about being a Christian in an unchristian world with our goaded friend Trent, the man what's in the back. What's up? How he we is doing? here today. How are we doing? Off. Yeah. Second time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so intentional. Uh, yeah, it was definitely intentional. Yep. But today, we're going to be speaking a bit about Trent's testimony, and Trent's going to be diving deep into some pretty intense mm-hmm. topics. Mm. Um, but the topics we'll be going over today, um, there's a few we're going to be speaking about trusting in God, battling with addictions, and then obviously being a Christian in an unchristian world. Mm-hmm. I but feel like... Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. No, it's um, okay. With, with like, Trent, there's a lot of Christians who don't have physical physical proof in their testimonies of like mm. God changing their lives definitely. and um, it's more a lot more of the time it's a spiritual battle like yeah. the everyday but mm. I can definitely see in Trent Bro, like, there's, yeah. there's so much Trent has come so far like just being like an outsider um, looking at his life like not even like because I know like obviously I'm friends with him but even just seeing how he's gone as a person mm. like in all ways of life, especially in the past few years, and we will learn about it in this testament. It's been absolutely amazing. He's definitely he's a gun for God, and it's, it's so good. But um, speaking on you, you want to speak about your testimony? Do you yeah. want to get I'll just like an introduction, and then we'll ask questions yeah. about it? Well, my name's Trent. Uh, I became a Christian about for well, I got baptized two years ago, basically mm. two years ago from that's, Sunday that's so cool. that's so or cool. yesterday. Yeah. Uh, being a Christian for say two and a half, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like so I've, so, yeah. A proper Christian. Yeah, like a proper Christian. Because I've always known about it, but I was kind of like mm. dipping my feet in to start with. Yeah. And then I, yeah. Oh, and by the way, I wouldn't say there is a thing, such thing as a proper yeah, yeah, Christian. Yeah, I just mean like well. he's in a relationship yeah, with Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. But yeah, keep going. So, I'd say my faith journey started, or my story started for, it was just before covid so, because that's when I met you. I met you just before. Yeah. Were you on that youth camp? You were on that. I'm uh, not youth camp. The school camp. Um, there was dirt bikes and stuff. We're at that campsite. Was that that? I was got yelled at by that kid yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, the cafeteria. Yeah. Bro, you were crazy. You <laughs> got, was a menace. Oh my god! I, 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 I was a menace. I was the crazy. The first story I ever heard about this guy was I was at school oh, no, and I was about to go to week. <laughs> um, oh no! I just leaked our school name. Cut that out. Cut that. Out. <laughs> uh, sorry guys I leaked our school name He's not swearing so, uh, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I actually leaked Like our location stuff. But anyways um, Pretty much I was going to another school Before I moved to My current one And I met Seb and mm. Trent um, And the first thing I ever heard about Trent Is that he Punched some kid in the face At youth group And now that that guy uh, listen, listen yeah, to, the listens to this podcast. Nah. So, do you want to say some apologies? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, but um, continue, continue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'd say my story starts uh just before COVID. So, at that camp, so I had that camp, came home. Um, there was already some issues like at home. Mm. Um, mainly because I was a rat bag but <laughs> didn't um, you have like a crazy mullet as well oh like, my no, no 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 we're not up to that yet oh okay, okay. bro we're up to the, like no, crazy we're up to the emo like <laughs> no 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 okay. it, i wasn't emo i had an overcomb <laughs> and it was clapped like clapped <laughs> we'll get mop. a photo up on this no yeah, no, no no you won't no you won't photo. <laughs> um and is this so the cringy bob era oh sorry i just <laughs> leaked his gamer going, tag his gamer tag um so then um after that camp came home um uh incident happens and then basically i was uh out of home living at a family members yeah and um a couple of things happened there as well and then i finally moved out of there and i was in a youth home yeah youth home yeah. era Oh Everybody the, remembers the, that. The youth Omar. Yeah. Bro. Oh. Crazy. Yeah, crazy yeah. things happened there. Um, like, you know, started getting into alcohol, mm. vaping, How old that were kind you of then? stuff. Like 13, 14? No, I was 14. F- f- yeah, okay. Can I ask yeah. you a question? But did yeah, you have so a relationship with Jesus while in the youth? Um, sort of. So I've always like known about Jesus and that stuff. Um, that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, I went to a youth group since year five. And I kind of went to, jumped around a bit to different youth groups. Yeah. And then I went to um, a youth group where that incident happened. 
Oh yeah, the punching incident. Yeah, yeah. That incident happens, and then um, this was COVID, by the way. Yeah, like and 2020 or 21? No, 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 way before that was like... I thought COVID was 2020, yeah, yeah. It was, it was whenever yeah. whenever youth groups used to do it at their houses in lockdown. That would have been 2020. Wasn't that yeah, just yeah. after the first lockdown? Because it was, yeah, two, it it was just like after the, middle, the first lockdown. Middle or after 2020, yeah. yeah. And so I, um, that incident happens, I didn't go back to that youth group. And then, um, you know, COVID and stuff, so I was just... At home most of the time. Yeah, yeah. I used to do mountain biking quite a lot. Uh, yeah, I remember. I don't do it until in summer. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, until the massive. Well, yeah, concussion. you'll hear that later in the yeah. story. Yeah. And then, <laughs> um, yeah, and then after that, had this school camp. Yeah. And then after that, came home. Uh, this incident happened at home, and then uh, I learned, I went and lived in my auntie's for about three months. I think it was about three months. Mm. Wait, did you already say this? No, yeah, no, but no. I circled back. I went oh, back yeah, in yeah, time yeah, yeah. a bit, yeah. And then um, after that, uh, you know, because I was a rat bag, incidents happened at my family member's house as well. Yeah. And then uh, went to a youth home, and here's where the story will slow down because there's a lot that Bro, happened there. I remember that. We call it in, like, our little friend group. We call it the youth home arc. Because yeah. there was, bro, it was like this. It, was it wasn't a stuff. It wasn't a long period of small it, people. It was, three so, it was like it was every single day something was happening. It was, it was crazy. Because originally it was bad. Like, I was, like, me and some of the other boys were quite young. We used to joke about it a little bit. <laughs> Still then, do. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe a bit, maybe a bit. Yeah. But then, um, I think it was... When we realized like some of the other things that happened, it were like, oh geez, like it was it kind of it was eye opening. But do mm. you, do you want to like I'll elaborate on yeah, that yeah. era? So, um, got there. There was, was kind of like a routine. So you'd go to school, so I had to travel. It was probably about two hours fully of travel to get to school because I have to walk to the bus stop, get the bus stop to the station, train it, and then walk from the station for about half an hour. That's crazy. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe like 20 minutes. But, um, and then they do like everybody go out and do shopping. Mm. Like they take everybody out in like a van. <laughs> like, <laughs> just everyone would go and do like shopping. Like not for ourselves. We just like, because yeah. they can't live us there by ourselves. Um, Bo is messing up with the flop. We're just trying to eat the fake berries on there. <laughs> I wonder what it's... Oh, yeah, keep going again. Um, and, yes, yeah, so they had, like, a routine kind of thing. And it was, like, you had your own room. You had to, like, lock your room when you left because a lot of the kids mm. that were there were pretty rough kids. Mm. Um, and a couple of things happened while I was there. Um, I was very depressed while I was there mm -hmm. in, that, yeah. in that time period. Um, did you feel like, at this point, like, God was starting to call you into a relationship with him? No, not yet. Not yet. No, because I was still going to youth group because Kurt, shout out to Kurt. Kurt is a good guy. This guy Kurt. would drive Kurt. me. Yeah. It's about half or like 25 minutes from where our youth group was. Mm. Um, and he'd drive me every Friday back yeah. to back to the home. Kurt. Bro. And like... That's a and he lives if, in the other direction as well. Yeah, he yeah. lives completely other direction. Now I live like two minutes away from him. <laughs> um, and yeah, so he used to take me home and like... Shout out to Kurt because if he didn't do that, you know, I probably wouldn't be where I am today yeah, at all because I wouldn't be going to youth group. Um, and then, uh, as I said, I was depressed. So there was an incident where I, you know, oh, I don't yeah. know if I can say it because yeah, we might get yeah. in trouble. But, mm. y yeah, you can probably guess what might have happened. Low. Yeah. Low. And... Um, a uh, couple of other incidents happened Not major ones Just you know mm -hmm. um, There was a major one Where some kid He stole like Something from my room And so It'd be yeah. wild Like imagine just like Some kid randomly You just come in your room And it was like gone Yeah yeah So I was at school And he skipped school or something Or he got suspended And so he was at the home Somehow I got into my room And then oh, I didn't even remember what he took But then when I got home, I found out, and mind you, not like this anymore. Me, I'm not <laughs> like this anymore. <sighs> yeah, I went into his room and I let, I got it back. <laughs> I got it back. Yeah, but I can remember when this stuff was happening. 
like I was, I didn't fully understand it. And that's why I felt bad. Cause once I remember when you went through that depressive period, I remember you messaged, you reached out to me and some of the other guys. And that was when I kind of was like, Oh, like I need it's to serious. stop. Yeah. Like I need to stop like joking about this. Cause it, it kind of like, I realized that this is actually like a lot more serious than I thought it was. Um, and then I was like, Oh damn. But yeah, it was intense. But yeah, like I don't like, you're strong, bro. Like, I, I don't know how yeah. I would have done that. Because I, like, struggle to, like, <laughs> live without my family for, mm-hmm. like, a couple of days. Like, say, on a camp or something. But, like, fully, like, leaving for a bit and trying to... It's almost like... That That must have been, like, alone. Like, very, very, like... That well, yeah, that's yeah. why I was so low. Like, yeah. Because I didn't feel like I had anyone, mm-hmm. you know? And especially, like, that wouldn't have helped by us us making fun of you yeah. either. Like... <laughs> I was going to say, like, younger guys, like, we, we like yeah. to annoy each other. Just, it's yeah. just, just funny. But, yeah. but like, like if, if you got a relate, if you got a friendship, friendship group that's just built on, on banter, banter yeah, exactly. it's not, not a good, yeah. it's, yeah. Not, it's, not, it's not a mature friendship because mm-hmm. you should be able to check up. But if you're just bandering all the time, yeah, you definitely. know, people are going to get And keep in mind, we, st- we still make mistakes. Definitely. Yeah. I make mistakes all the time with my banter. Like continuously, <laughs> yeah, I know. And then, um, but like you learn from it though. <laughs> it's good. It's good to learn from yeah. it. Mm. But yeah. um, but yeah. But so you were in the youth home. Yeah. Um, and then there was a bunch of incidents that happened. And then, while you're in the youth home, did was there like a sense of God yet, or not really? Um, I mean, when I went to youth group, yeah, like yeah, definitely. I was. That's when I was started stepping my toe in. Um. Because, I mean, I'd say stepping my toe in back when I was still at home and all that. And then, you know, once I got out of home, yeah, went downhill a bit, quite mm-hmm. a bit. Cause then, and then you went back You went back home? Um, eventually, so there's when still more. When you had a, a foster home for a little no, bit? No, it wasn't really. Um, I was at um, some people that we knew, they were like, yeah, he could... He can come and stay here because there's a time limit at the youth home. It's oh, three yeah, months. Yeah. yeah, you can't just stay there forever. Yeah, um, and I, I, yeah, because that youth hope youth home period, there's a lot that's quite blurry for me mm. because it's been mm. like I've forgotten about it over to do with therapy or you know, just, that's you good. know, God's taken it out of my life, so it's not in my yeah. head anymore. Which is a good thing, because there's probably a lot more I could elaborate on, but I just don't remember half That's of it. That's great, though. It's good that you've, like, moved on from mm. a hard period like that. Um, and then I was at, yeah, these people that we knew. Um, this was lockdown, like, peak lockdown. So yeah, everything yeah, was shut yeah. down. Um, I was still going to school, because it was just down the road. So, um, crazy jump, going mm. from two-hour travel to literally mm. the two-minute walk to school. Um, and I was still going. Um, I had my boy Louis, who'd come yeah. as well. That was yeah. Such a good. That was good times. I won't lie. Yeah. When I was at school, because um, because let's be honest, at the current school that me and Jesse are at now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because let's be honest, who did work in lockdown? <laughs> no, that's true. Say. I want to say Fortnite. Fortnite. We were what yeah, year so nine, yeah. and uh, it's like no one yeah. actually. No one did any work in lockdown, I, I swear. One time I joined, I joined a Zoom and I thought my mic was muted and I was in math and I was like, I said to Sam, I hate math. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my teacher was just like looking at me and my screen was like, Bro, oh. do you know what I did once? We were in a call and um, we were in English and that was the teacher and one of my friends, Noah, I kept calling him on Discord so it would like, he would drop out of the Zoom call. Bro. And like Mrs. McCarran was like, why are you laughing, Jesse? And then we said nothing. And then he's like, no, someone say something. And then Noah was like, Jesse keeps calling me over and over and full snitch to me. But, um, bro, it was a good time. So. Mm. But yeah. jumping back yeah. onto the main thing. Yeah. So then, um, you know, I was a rat bag, obviously, at school as well. So if you're a rat bag <laughs> outside of school, you're a rat bag in school. Are we up to, like, year nine now? Yeah. yeah. This is... Um, and then... <laughs> I don't know if I yeah the incident. You don't have to elaborate. Too no, much. It's fine. Um, it wasn't like it didn't actually like I didn't beat up anyone or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was um, yeah incident that happened and um, yeah so I got expelled from that place uh, from school and then got kicked out of that place because I got expelled and then um, 
I stayed at my grandparents for about three months as well. And they got to the point where it was like, you know, I got nowhere else to go. Mm. So I just had to go home. Um, even though it wasn't the safest place yeah. for me. Um, because what was happening when I was back at home was I would be, you know, a rat bag to, you know, a rat bag at home and then, you know, situations would happen, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Do you think those situations where you, like, I don't know if you were, like, getting angry or annoyed or something, mm. do you think that opened your eyes to, like, needing Jesus? Do you feel like you were, like, fighting for something like, that only Jesus could, like, provide? Well, back then I really was, like, I didn't even think about mm. Jesus yeah, at yeah. all. Like, literally zero. Mm. Um, you know, like, I wouldn't be thinking... I'd, I'd be living like someone who doesn't know Christ. That's yeah. how I was living. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, I mean, at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I went to youth group and that, but I basically just went to hang out with people. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. would you say you were, like, living for the world, basically? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. Well, and I rate that answer. Like, I feel like a lot of people would be like, yeah, yeah, I think... But trench is honest. Yeah. No. I... I've also yeah. dabbled living with the world, like I said before. Yeah, because it's like I don't, I don't really care if people know what I've done now, mm. yeah. because it's like because you've you've you're now a exactly. Person. I'm not, I'm not, I'm a different and, person and now. God has moved in yeah. you, and we've seen that as well. Because I was gonna say, you remind me of um of um we'll speak into this about permissive will because I know someone else was actually speaking. Somebody commented, was, yeah. yeah, about permissive will. You remind me a lot about permissive will, um and permissive will. Um, if we wanted to jump into it, um, which I didn't even know until a week ago until this guy asked about it. and then the I whole didn't know about this things. until 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Basically, permissive will is when God sometimes will allow bad things to happen so that you can grow and become a stronger man and woman mm. of God. And the person that reminds, like who I'm reminded of in your story is definitely Joseph. So if you don't know the story of Joseph, Joseph... Um, was loved by his father, had a big family of brothers, um, had this massive colourful coat, um, but his brothers became jealous. He got beaten, um, sold off as a slave um, to, I think it was Egyptians or something like that. Egypt, yeah. And then eventually um, he went from being the slave and ended up being the king of Egypt. Well, you, for, he, went, it, he was enslaved and he got wrongfully accused, put in prison. Yeah, so oh even my, worse. yeah even worse. And then, and then he gets put in second in command of Egypt. Which leads to like the Exodus. Yeah, and then he's, um, his brothers pulled up in Egypt, That's found crazy. him, and yeah. he's, he doesn't even have like anger towards them. But the thing that reminds me in that is like you had all this stuff from the youth home, um, from the things at home, from like this anger and this built up of mixed emotions, and then we'll speak about um, addictions later. Mm. And then all of a sudden it was like, of course, like all this stuff was happening. Mm. And it might've felt like really sucky that God was just letting all this happen in your life. And he's like, oh, where is God? And it can feel like something like that a lot. Um, But it was cool to see that when you leaned on God and when you trusted in God, then that's when you saw the things shift. Because you've gone from like, like I've seen in the past couple of years, you've gone from like this guy that you didn't know much about Jesus and that you were quite lost. And like, I remember getting lots of messages from you and calls from you, like, because you felt quite like alone. And now you're like at um, Youth Alive Academy studying. Yeah, I'm like ghost you now because I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he, I'm, he's moved on. He's, he's, a, he's a celebrity now, but not. Nah, but it's so good. Like, you're now like doing everything from God. You're a man of God, most importantly. Mm-hmm. And that nothing is ever going to take that away from you. And I think that that is a testimony. That is mm-hmm. the testimony. Like, I, like that is, like, so sick. I think just yeah. even speaking about it proves that as well. Yeah. Like, mm. this is so, like, courageous from Trent. I know Jesse and I have things that we, we like, yeah. we struggle with and we don't, like, really feel comfortable talking mm. about it yet. But Trent's just laying, like, I mean, I'm sure there's some things, but he's being so, like, so open with it. And yeah. Yeah. I, um, I want to open into the first topic. I want to open to trustfulness not, in... Oh, you're not done? Okay, okay. keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> my bad, my um, bad. Yeah, so went back home and then it it was very weird. Like a year being out of home and then you just mm. go back and it's supposed to be all normal. Yeah. Um, at this point, I 
I hadn't quite oh. given my life to Christ. Like I'd done the thing at youth where people were like, if you want to follow, <laughs> yeah, Jesus, like your hand up. The, and I'd done it like three times. And I, what I was doing, I was waiting for something to change, mm. and nothing changed. Mm. And I think that's what you're talking about, where God has put me in that year to equip me for the rest of my life. Mm. Um, and. Because I feel like to get, because we've spoken about the armor of God. To get the armor of God, sometimes you're gonna have to go through a battle to actually get equipped mm-hmm. by it. Sometimes to have faith means you have to go through a battle of like everything's going wrong. I have to build my faith then, so then I can build my faith through mm. everything else. Yeah. Or the word of God, I can use the word, the sword um, of His word now mm. against all the things in my life. So now I can do it all the time and not just in this moment. And I feel like, especially with you, um, we'll get into it, trustfulness, faith, um, so much like the sword, um, the chest plate, absolutely. Like I can see in those um, many years that God was like slowly building this equipment of the body, the armor of God. So then that you can go into all of life now mm. being like, you've conquered it, you know, you've mm. beat it, you've mm. d- defeated the devil in those areas of life. Of course, they might still affect you in some ways, but now you have what God has gifted yeah. you through that and you've grown and now you're a man of God, um, which is, is amazing. Like that is crazy. Like, that is so sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think were you saying something like you, um, what was it? It was like you, you were waiting for change, but you yeah. didn't realize like you have to... Make the decision as well? Yeah, well, because I thought I was like, oh, I made the decision, but I didn't change anything in, in myself. Mm. And I thought, oh, no, God will, just, God, will, God will just do it. You know, mm. I don't have to pray or read my Bible. God will just do it. Um, and obviously he didn't yeah. because I wasn't praying or reading my Bible. Um, and then I was off, off school fully for about three months. Oh, no, a month, sorry. Well, technically it was three because it was like end of the year, like mm-hmm. term four. Um, and uh, went back to school in term one of year ten. What are you laughing Bro, at? Bro, no, there was just like stroking the mic. Yeah, it was like some hollowness. Who I felt me? like I was in a cave for a second. Who me? You know this mic off like ambient. Noise. Yeah, it was like <laughs> I was like. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, um, yeah. So went to this school, um. And then about, this was um, about mm, halfway through the year, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, fully decided to follow Christ. Um, so did the, you know, put your hand up in youth thing. Mm. Um, started going to church regularly, you yeah. know, reading my Bible. So praying. good. Yeah, it was, so, it was so about good. then, wasn't it, when I started coming regularly? Yeah, I would say so. Mm. I remember it was like you, you got more involved into youth. And then... Like volunteering wanted, and stuff. Yeah, and then you wanted to do mm. church. And then I remember you started coming to church. Yeah, but then, you know, I volunteered. I think I did first two weeks I actually came to church, like, because I was coming to church. Mm. Um, was because of volunteering. Because, like, I'd come a couple times, but it was very staggered. You know, I'd come, like, a month, then it'd be two months until I went again. Mm. Um, first two weeks I was just volunteering, doing stuff. And then I think that's what, you know, because I was like, oh, this is actually cool. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I had been in church, like, not all my life, but most of my, most of my childhood. Yeah. Um, and, well, I went to, um, I went to a Baptist church, and it just wasn't, it wasn't my thing. I have nothing against Baptists, by the way. I'm just, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't my okay. thing, right? That's okay. Yeah. yeah. I um, do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, I went to a Baptist church. I went to a Baptist church. I went to a Baptist church. I went to a Baptist, Baptist church. Anglican. I didn't go Catholic, thankfully. Did and you go to Jehovah? <laughs> Jehovah, Jehovah Witness. Witness. Or Mormon? Mormon. <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I was that guy at your door. Do you want to hear about Jesus Christ? <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep going, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so then, you know, I came to church. Um, so I come in, mm. you know, gave my life to Christ. And then um, it took me a long time to realize that I went through what I went through because God put me mm. through that. Because then people started coming into my life that were dealing with similar stuff that I was. Mm. Um and um, so, like for example, vaping, and I still struggle with vaping. Mm. Should we should like, we go into the addiction session now? We'll link this. We'll um, link yeah, it. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We'll link so it. we'll go into our first session now. 
um, speaking on addictions, mm. um, I might bring a little bit of my addictions Same, yeah. in. But my addictions, my addictions are like weird. They're not like, like drugs or like alcohol. You guys are like, I'm gonna say something wacky as hell. <laughs> like I have an addiction to eating paint or something like that. I don't know. No, my I we'll get into it in a second. Oh. But um, how do you think? Addictions like led you away from God. Mm-hmm. Well, because any addiction you do, like mm. you know, watching yeah. porn, vaping, smoking, drinking, yeah, um, even swearing. I know a lot of people that are Christian that swear. Like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. No, that's yeah, this isn't. This is. I, I'd say it's. It, it could. It can be an addiction, um, but also. Um, I feel like for some people, it's also if you've been a non-Christian and you've been swearing and stuff, because your mind, your mind after, especially this is how porn addictions work. You, what happens is, um, I don't know if people have seen that video where that bird thing, um, it goes up to this like blob on the floor, you know, sucks it up. That's what the addiction is. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it has a high, falls down, hits the ground pretty hard. Yeah. And then... Um, it finds another one again, keeps doing it, keeps doing it, and it doesn't have the same effect. What, what happens is, and then your brain starts to be like, oh, it's okay because I feel good about it. Mm. That's any addiction, you know, yeah. any of the ones I just named, because you start to feel good about it. And like, because, you know, um, every Christian deals with lust. Oh, That's one yeah. of the biggest struggles. Well, look at, like, even, like, the most, like, pr- like, Important people in the Bible deal with lust. Bro, mm. David. Oh King my David. days, bro! Half bro of the half killed half someone the, over yeah, it. Yeah, bro. Half the guys in the Bible, like, and it's know. the one thing in the Bible where it doesn't say fight it. It says run from flee. it. Yeah, it says oh, I, flee. I searched this up in preparation. It's it says like dip. It doesn't say oh yeah fight up. It says nah, get the heck mm. out of that one. Yeah, run away because it, it's so it, it full like it just governs you because it, it's it's your flesh. It's like it's like oh I need it. I want that, um, which sucks because. I've seen in like relationships in my life, when lust gets into it, it it, it ruins. Oh it. yeah, it falls apart. Because then you're you're not doing it out of love. You're doing it out of this this thirst that your flesh is wanting. You get you get what we're talking about earlier. Jesse has a very short attention span. Oh my days! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dopamine. It's yeah, <laughs> dopamine. Because you know, doing something that makes you feel good puts mm-hmm. dopamine into mm-hmm. your head. Is this? But flee youthful lust and follow after righteousness, faith, love, peace. With mm. them that call on the Lord out of pure heart. Yeah. It's American Santa version. And it's like all of those things are like, lust is like the opposite of all of, all of those. Like yeah. righteousness, mm. where you're looking at a, a, a like a woman, like, like a a, somebody woman, made in, yeah. the, in the image of God with like your own like worldly intent. Mm. Bro, that is like so convicting when you're like, you, it's like a, it's a person that was made in the image of God and you're like legit mm. putting them down to like, Mm. Like a like a piece of trash mm-hmm. when you look at them in a lustfully way. It is legit like looking at someone as like plastic. It's like fake. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. it's like you're not actually respecting, which is hard and it's super convicting. And I'm not saying that like yeah, go do, don't be like that. Like that's something for me as well. Like I mm-hmm. still battle with lust, and I feel like every person does mm. in their own different ways and forms. Um, yeah. But the one thing God has reminded me in that is to get away from lust is like you legit it's it's run away from the lust but fight the devil you know like mm-hmm. say to the devil i'm not doing this you know like yeah. you're not gonna take me on but with the lustfulness like if it's on tiktok delete it if it's on if, even if it's on your phone like legit yeah, just like drop mm-hmm. it for Don't a couple of seconds phone, yeah. yeah or even if it's at night just go to bed like no matter what the time is like mm-hmm. you need to run away from it but also combat yourself against the devil yeah but whatever the devil is using to get to you just get rid of it okay. yeah like if you're if you're scrolling before you go to bed and you're, you know, you're some, asking for it bro. some yeah, yeah you literally ask for it if some you know sus tiktok or or instagram reel comes up not ours watch ours before bed yeah yeah watch, um, watch, yeah. Yes. <laughs> watch um cliff and um like cliff, george yeah. and george all those george, other yeah. guys mm. yeah um yeah, like, because I know probably some of us here have struggled with this before, you know. Mm. Something comes up and then you're like, you get that dopamine hit and, you know, you feel good yeah. for a bit because you've just seen something that is appealing to Definitely. our flesh. Mm. And then, um, you know, that leads to other things. Yeah, And I think that's why it's really good to, one, have 
you know, I have blocks on my phone for certain apps mm, at certain yeah. times. Um, and also, even if you don't struggle with porn addictions or anything, have an, like something that blocks it completely yeah. that you can't turn off because... Like, you don't want to risk it. You never yeah. know. Like, you seriously never know. I, if yeah. you're like, oh, I'm never going to watch it, blah, blah, blah. Like, I used to say, I'll never drink. I'll never smoke. I'll never, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. But what have I done? I've done all those things mm. back in, in the past. Yeah. I think... Um, oh, you go, you go. Uh, I'll be quick. I'll be quick. Um, I feel like it's so important to, like, take... Um, realize that the enemy is actually like speaking mm. like attacking you through these things it's so yeah. easy to think oh these are my thoughts yeah. like I'm like my flesh wants to do this but like the devil is like prompting you to do this like mm. he's, Bro, he's working through these things oh my goodness yeah I'm so glad we're actually talking about this because I feel like this is the one topic that especially with guys we're just like bro like why are we talking yeah, we about we get this? scared to talk about it yeah because mm. it's it's like it's so convicting mm. like it's it's mm. legit to it's like it honestly puts you, it, it gets you and put, it, it like shows your lowest level. Yeah. It's like looking at your yourself because when you go out in public, you're not going to be like showing yourself at that level. And when you go out to your friends, your family, you're not going to show yourself mm. at that level. But to be open about it, which I'm happy we're talking about it because I feel like through this, a lot of people will have the encouragement to confess about it. Yeah. As we said last week, mm. confessing your sins is so important. And it helps other it. believers. Like I think it says in Romans or Acts. Yeah, because you can exactly. relate to it. Yeah. Because that's what's helped me is like having someone that you can relate to makes it so easy to, to talk about the yeah. battles. Yeah. And I know we're on a podcast and we're, you know, kind of being a bit vulnerable, but you don't have to be on a podcast or up on a platform mm, or, yeah, or in yeah. front of a bunch of people to be vulnerable. You can even just be vulnerable with God because mm. even though he knows, you know, what you're struggling with, yeah. it, you, you can still be vulnerable even with him. just to say it, it's yeah. like it puts you down to a level. So after you do that kind of stuff, you like the temptation is to want to hide. Like yeah. Adam and Eve. Like after yeah, Eve. like hiding yeah. in the bushes and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my and the days, temptation is like, so don't good. like... Oh, like I feel like the enemy tells me so often after I after I fall into temptation, it's like, oh, God's like you're worthless. God, God doesn't like He's not gonna forgive you for this. Mm. And, like you've done it one too many times. But bro, yeah. it's such a lie. Bro, I used to like when I made a mistake when I was a kid. I was like, I used to like tell myself like I used to have this thing in my head. I was like, tomorrow's not gonna be a good day. <laughs> oh, God's gonna get so angry at me. He was like, I was like, oh no, I've, I used to. I've messed up. Yeah, I used to think. <laughs> I used to think you gave me headaches. From doing, from really, doing, yeah, I used to actually think that. <laughs> headache for Trent. Yeah, <laughs> no, I actually used to think that. <laughs> He's done crazy. it more. He's done it more. Two times headaches. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I think no, it's just because I don't drink enough water. <laughs> <laughs> but going off of um, porn and lust addictions, mm. I haven't dabbled with addictions with alcohol and smoking. Can you speak on that? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I if, you don't, um, if you don't want to speak about it. The main saying. way that people get into this stuff is because uh, you get influenced by the people you're around. Mm. So the world. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So look at who you hang around. I'm not saying, like, especially once you turn 18, there's nothing wrong with going down to the pub and having a beer. But um, you gotta you got to limit it because... Mm. What happens is when you get drunk or you, you know, get high and stuff like that, um, why do you think people do stupid stuff? It's because mm. the devil's, you're in a vulnerable spot and so the devil, you know, gets at you. you and caught then, lacking. Huh? You, you're getting caught lacking by the devil. Yeah, you get caught lacking by the devil. Um, so, um, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, um, if you're at a party, don't drink because I understand how hard it is, especially if everybody else is doing it's it. That peer pressure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not gonna say don't drink, but I'd say, um, you know, mm-hmm. limit it. I think it's to how much you have. It's like a snowball effect. Like you start yeah. off like you start off small, and then you get more and more and more. Mm. But if you know you have that self control, like. Um, yeah, I know. Oh, there's a lot of people that are gonna be like. No, you shouldn't drink at all before you turn 18. Yeah. But there's some, you know, you're at a party, right? You're getting peer pressured by everyone to, oh, just one drink, just one drink. And if they do keep saying, oh, just another drink, and they keep doing that, obviously you can mm-hmm. stand up and be like, no, I'm just having one, that's all right. Yeah. But I've got a, I've got a verse for this. Mm, and also, um, why you look for it, I was yeah. just thinking, like, also, as a, as a Christian, we should be like, obviously, at that point, you weren't. Mm. And... I'm not, obviously we're not perfect like I could I could easily 
do that. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying I wouldn't. Mm. But I think it's important, like, you're recognised that you're not hanging around, like, the people that you want to yeah. be as a Christian. And then, like, obviously excluding yourself from that environment. Obviously, it's good yeah. to have non, non-Christian believers, mm. but don't, don't let their, their, like, habits and stuff influence you yeah. and draw you away from God. One thing that I've dealt with, um, mm. the world, like, the complex of... Um, being Christian in the world is, is not with alcohol and smoking stuff. But the one verse that um that speaks about this is in Romans chapter twelve verse two and it says, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Mm. And I feel like um for me I've had addictions it's a weird addiction. I had addiction of just doing what would like like help me get more friends and like Mm. like helping me um like relate to people and also belong Mm. like i had a lot of things um growing up like belonging with people and finding like the group for me yeah yeah definitely fitting in um and this verse is legit saying like it's it there's i feel like everyone has a longing to fit in and it's good to fit in but make sure you're fitting in with a group that will build you up in a relationship Mm. with god because I feel like to fit in a group with that, you don't have to have the requirements or absolutely anything in your life needed to, f- to fit in because we are all are, are imperfect and we all are sinners and we all want to go to God. Mm. Um, and with this, yeah. it says, then you will learn to know God's will for you because it says that he will transform you um, into a new person by changing the way you think. We are only transformed when we change the way we think. When we go into a situation of lust, if we go into, oh, like maybe just one more time, oh, I've already seen this woman, like I, 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 I'm already done, I'm already in the depths, I can't do it anymore. If you tell yourself that, you're, you're yeah, done. That's the enemy. Mm. That's if you, the enemy. It's like, um, oh, what's his, Simon Peter, when he was in the water, when oh, he, yeah, when he yeah, was yeah, walking yeah. over, he, he was like, I have faith in God. But as soon as he saw the waves and he shifted his focus on what is the truth and what is having that faith and trustfulness in God, that was when he began to sink. You know, when those things come, you have to change your thinking to say, no, I'm a man of God. Mm. This isn't who God has made me. I am stronger than this. And that's when you will say things change. You have to change the way you think. Same with alcohol and same with absolutely any addiction. You have to go into those being like, remembering who God has made you yeah. and knowing that I'm like, um, there was a person that told me recently, like we are aliens in this world as Christians. We, we move away from the world. Mm. We are like, mm. we are different because we don't follow. And when we talk about the world, we're not talking about people. I think a lot of people mess it up. It's not yeah. people. I would say the world is almost like a movement. Like the world is almost like we it's wear like following the trends. Yeah. It's like we wear, the specific, I wear these specific pants because it's like a trend I like, or I wear this shirt because of a, a team I support. And there's nothing wrong <laughs> with, you know, liking there's fashion. There's nothing wrong with it, yeah. Liking fashion or, you know, or liking movies or... <laughs> there's a lot wrong with that. But, um, <laughs> but like, there's nothing wrong... Like, uh, we were talking about this about uh, two episodes ago, mm. about, um, you know... Uh, putting stuff above God's like video games. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with those things. It's there's something wrong with them when you put them above God's it's when so you're if, following them. Yeah, yeah. Like an example is if you're um buying clothes but you're not tithing at mm. church. I'm not saying if you're a new Christian don't you don't have to tithe at church. But yeah. if you're a regular at a church, right, and you have the money to tithe but you rather spend that on either, you know, food or clothing, then that's when it becomes a problem mm. because you're putting it above God. Yeah. It just doesn't, doesn't just have to be tithing. And it's, it's also, it like changes the way, like if it's changing who you are, have you ever noticed that essays have the same look? Mm. It's because they're all trying to follow with a movement yeah. of what makes them fit in with those I swear they will despawn though, bro. <laughs> I don't see any anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, that, is that is true. That is true. I feel like definitely for me, I've, I've had that with, with money. I mean, it's, it's been, because I, I, bought, I bought a car and I feel like for, for a while it was, it took up, so much of my like brain space and it's like when you think about it it's just it's just a like a worldly thing it is yeah. I, I had to change my my whole my whole like, like mindset around it because mm. i have i know a lot of people who who really um and good good christian friends who struggle with um like material material yeah. stuff have you ever and noticed like people sometimes build their whole personality i think we spoke about this like their identity like last mm. week over these things 
um, in, in a world, like the world will try to make you into things that aren't God. Mm. That's what the devil does. When the devil sees you are pursuing God, he'll say, no, maybe you should actually pursue this instead. Because then you're, you're moving away from what God has called you and you're moving into where what the world is like. No, you, I think you would fit into this mm. criteria and into this area. Um, and for me, I wanted to fit in with everyone. So I was always changing myself. And that was an addiction I got is I was different in front of every single person because I was just trying to fit in mm. with the people around me. And that's where I messed up. And then when I was actually myself and I was a Christian, I saw people lo um, leave my life and I saw people hate me. Um, it says in a verse here, I find it really quickly. It actually says in the Bible that the world will actually hate you. Oh, yeah. um, and that and it's, that, in, it's in one yeah. John. It's in one John. John. John, John, John. And well, Christians says, get persecuted every day. Yeah, like, all, all around the world. world. And they did back then. Like, look how the disciples died. Yeah. Like, they all died for believing that Jesus died and rose again. Yeah. Um, happy Easter, everyone, from yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 13, it reads, So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother is really a murderer at heart. So, that, so the world hates us. Um, and the world hated Jesus. Look, like God sent his one and only son. And what happened to him? He got persecuted. He got mm -hmm. the worst punishment. He it's was like tortured. The, the, what is it? The, the building block the builders rejected is now the cornerstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's crazy because like a lot of people think that um, Christianity is like this, like, oh, it's, it's perfect harmony. It's living life to, to the amazing. It's good. <laughs> life is amazing. No. Life is amazing but, yeah, as a is. Christian. But it, the world isn't going to like you for mm. that. The world isn't going to be like, oh, heck yeah. They're going to be like, heck no, I don't want to live like that. I want to yeah. govern my life. It's like that, um, that analogy of, of who do you really give as the king over your life? Is it yeah. Jesus or is it you? And I feel like it's always changing and for my life at least. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying like, we're not saying everybody that you meet is going to want, is going to hate you because you're mm. a Christian. Like I know you have a lot of good non-Christian friends and so does Seb probably. Well, I had such a good experience at work the other day. I was like, yeah. um, some random, some random Donnie. Um, and I was like, oh, he was asking me what I want to do after school. And I was like, oh, I want to do mission work. And he's like, what's that? I was like, I want to be a missionary. He's like, bro, that's sick. <laughs> I, I, I don't think he's yeah. Christian, but it's still yeah. like, it's still yeah, going like, to be. Like, we all have friends that are non-Christian, but, uh, you know, it's really good if you have non-Christian friends that mm. respect, you know, um, your faith. And you don't even have to, like, it's the reason why I think it's great to have non-Christian friends is you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be all faith-based when mm. you're with them it's good to sew into them but also means you can just take them out you know go grab a coffee or something yeah. and you can just talk about life you don't have to you know talk about church or like you know with the podcast I noticed that like one thing I've noticed um, growing up with, like, with guys that aren't Christian is a lot of them are looking for something that yeah. is Jesus oh, that we know yeah. is Jesus but to them like they still don't know and sometimes it's just sowing that seed it's not being like here's a bible here's a bible do this do this do this do this mm. and then you'll find Jesus it's not being that it's just being that one representation of what God has done in your life yeah. that will influence them what could happen to yeah. theirs and as they'll, well they'll see that you're different as well yeah because like, i've seen a lot of guys that aren't christian listen to the podcast which is amazing because that's exactly what well, we, what we want to see yeah. Yeah. yeah and we also want to see christians watching as well because this isn't just something made for christians this is made for everyone everyone no matter who you are or what you're doing or where you want to go this mm. is showing what god has done in our lives at our young age and what god can do in yours mm. as well but um i think it's really important though um how good it is to have non-Christian friends yep. because you don't want to be, we were speaking about this um, recently we, um, mm. in the last episode, you don't want to be sheltered by Christianity. Yeah, um, it's like, it's like, um, so I, I was homeschooled for a bit mm. and then like you, you're very sheltered when you're homeschooled because you don't see anybody. It's like you're Mormon. Mm. But, <laughs> <laughs> but is, that, is that Mormon? No, that's um, Amish. Called, um, Amish. Amish, yeah, Amish, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a um, be kind of sick though. <laughs> yeah, no, no Wi-Fi, no nothing. Yeah, they don't. I'm pretty. Anyway, we're waffling. But <laughs> so, how do you feel God has helped you move out of that um, the addiction of um, like fitting in? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I got called out of that 
when I started pursuing more things for good, especially when I moved schools, I found people that were more closely related to Christianity, like you and the other boys and Trent. Um, but then I noticed like that it was, it was good to have that friendship, but it was also a thing I had to make in my head. Like it wasn't like, it, it says change your thinking. Like it's good to have people that are Christian, but only you can make the decision to change your thinking in those situations. And the way I changed my thinking was I started, I legit, I started living for God. And I started living from a perspective where I was like, I don't have to worry about worrying like about what people think of me and what people are judging of me. The only thing that cares, the only judgment that does care is God's judgment. And that was that, that was that whole year of my faith in God like built because I was like, oh my goodness, like I don't know if I truly believe that he died on the cross for me um and then I, ho- I went through this whole year of finding myself and finding my relationship with god especially after lockdown i felt like i didn't really have a relationship with god i don't think in the entire of lockdown like i prayed every night but i don't think i, I read my bible once or really i think everybody so. felt that though i felt quite a f- far away from god mm. um and no, then same, yeah. the mm. way i found it was um there was this teacher at our school called mr smith i remember he said something it was like if you do not truly believe that jesus died on the cross for you are you saved? And I was like, holy yeah. heck. I was like, and then it was this whole thing of like finding myself, finding what hope is, finding that confident hope that Jesus did actually die on the cross for me. Yeah. He has a plan for me. Um, and I remember there was a Psalm that um, Psalm 23 was given to me. It's the Lord is my shepherd. I like nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leaves me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me on the right path for his name's sake. And even though I may walk through the valley of death, I have no fear for you're with me. You're writing stuff that comfort me. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Um, okay. So much more. Damn. I can't remember. I used, to, I used to be able to do everything. And it was, it was like I was continuously um, reciting that every night to remember that this plan that God has for me. Um, mm. And then last year, I was reading a lot of Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, which is um, for the plans he has for me, um, plans to prosper, not to harm me, um, especially because we've gone through this whole situation of going from year 10 to then year 11. It's like, it hits you like a truck. Like, what are you going to do after school? Who are you going to be? What are you going to make money from? Who are you going to be in the long run? It, like, it was this thing that I was like, I don't know. And then I just had to trust in God. Um, but with those things, to answer your question, um, it was a changing of my thinking in realizing that the only judgment that I need to care about is God's. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that helped me to, to now do stuff at, um, at school, like being captain and also going on stage at youth and church is, um, especially at youth and church, like people aren't going to go up there judging you. Like everyone has oh, yeah. a judgment of something, but they're not going to be like, oh, like they're not going to be looking on your downfall or praying on your downfall. No, I guarantee you. It's very, very likely nobody is praying for your downfall. Yeah. yeah. Especially like you think you think it's about you, but it's not about mm. you. It's it's about It's like you put that it's like that you think you're like it's all it, it sounds bad, but you, sometimes I feel like we put uh, this thing in our head that we think we're like a victim. Um mm. which we sure we can be. That's what Kanye West is doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh no. But um I think with the I with, don't have an opinion on that by the way. <laughs> yeah, neither, neither. That's that's trend only. But with the victim stuff, um I feel like to stop being a victim is I just stop letting things get to my head with it, which a lot, a lot of it still can get to my head. But with it, I was like, when people told me I was a good looking, I was like, well, I'm made in the image of God. I'm who God has made me to be. And I can be okay with that. That's how a lot of people, like we spoke about it recently. A lot of people aren't okay in their skin because they're too focused on what people around them want them to be and how they never find this true satisfaction of being in their own skin. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, and it was, it was long and it it takes years for me. It took so long to stop caring about what people think. And sometimes I still do. I'm not saying that I, I I, I've completely battled. And I feel like we always will. Mm-hmm. But um, I've definitely learned a lot with God. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, how about you? Because I know you you were saying that you struggled a little bit after the first episode with identity. What addictions have you had with, not even identity, but just anything really? Well, I've had I've had so many addictions. I feel like it's it's easy to class them as not not addictions when they are. Yeah. Like, because they might. Yeah. Sorry, they might be addictions to you. It's like. They're, they're addictions to you, right? Mm. But someone else looking from the outside might think it's just mm. normal, like a you know? Habit or yeah, yeah, a habit. Yeah. Like, but I would say, as an example, like my car, I was, it was very tempted. Like, I was thinking about working way more and stuff, and just disregarding my what what I want to do for school and stuff. Mm. And 
I guess you can be addicted to working. Um, not I, I wasn't like at that point yet, but I feel like I was I was ad- addicted to thinking about about my car all the time, and it was like a very high priority for me. Mm. And as I said before, there's like I see a lot of people who struggle with mat- like materialistic things. Yeah, and I was one of them, and I still do sometimes. I'm not gonna say I don't. Like I still, I still. I Would still you say? Want things. Were you more addicted to the actual work or like the money you were the getting money, from the, the money? The money, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and the work. The work doesn't get too bad when you when you want the constantly money that bad. Doing it, yeah. But I think it got to the point where it's like the it's like lust when you're constantly doing it. Mm. Like it doesn't get too bad because it's it's yeah. now in your brain. Like yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not. It's that like bad. A, you're used to it. Yeah. But I was just, I think God God used like other people in my life to show me, um, how damaging it can be and mm. how um you can realize you can't even you, sometimes you don't even realize that it's happening sometimes you don't even realize you're addicted to it yeah but i'm at the point now where i'm like thinking oh, i might even sell it to go on my mission or whatever yeah i yeah. probably will but yeah that'd yeah. be so cool just letting mm. go of it yeah yeah what about you Trent? obviously you have spoken a lot of addictions today mm. mm-hmm. um have you had any addictions like worldly addictions like where for me i was like, fitting in for you it was um trying to get money in your car materialistic things like things that the world was like using to govern you and pull you away from your relationship Mm. with god i mean it's all the stuff i've really been talking about Mm -hmm. because those are the only ones that i would consider addiction all the other ones are just i wouldn't like stuff like you know um like for a while um i didn't i wasn't it's stuff like you know not hygiene and things like that like i think that can ju- that can just be a habit that you that mm. you know i wouldn't say it's an addiction because an addiction is where you um you get you know a kick out of it you feel good usually an addiction is when you feel good it can mm. be you know things like like self-harm can be an addiction mm. seriously yeah, self-harm yeah. can be an addiction definitely um because sometimes, um, and I'm speaking from a little bit of experience with this stuff. Yeah. Um, but it can, especially when you're so like, you're at the worst point you can be. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's like, you, know, you feel like you're feeling something, mm-hmm. even though mm. you think that you can't feel anything. It's like you're, you're looking, you're just looking for something. Over yeah, and over again. like the same with... Alcohol and you know vaping, those kind of addictions, those are escapes. That's why I fell into those because they're escapes for the situation I was in. Yeah. Um, one thing I do want to address about vaping, real quick. Yeah. A lot of people are like, "Why don't you just quit?" You know. Um, breathe air. <laughs> yeah, breathe air. But it's like once you've started, it's it's one of the hardest things to get off, in my opinion. It was it was the hardest thing for me yeah. to get off. Other than, you know... Um, it's the dopamine, yeah. Yeah, because uh, it's right there, like, mm. in your pocket. And you can, mm-hmm. you know... I think it's so easy to, like, not... Or if you don't... If you haven't experienced it, it's so easy to not validate other people's addictions. Exactly, yeah. yeah. definitely. Because like, some people... I, yeah, I've noticed that... Like, I've done the same as well. I'll, I'll be completely vulnerable. Like, I have... I feel like I have put down people's addictions because mm-hmm. I, I haven't experienced them, but I feel like they shouldn't be too hard to get out of, um, which mm-hmm. I've, I've made that mistake. But I feel like with vaping, like, I haven't vaped myself, but I can see that a lot of people that do get hooked onto it, it's not that... the It's not like they want to do it, but it's almost like a way out of something that is going yeah. on. Yeah. Like... Cause, um, it's like, like it's reality. cause vaping is a lot different to smoking. A lot of people, um, relate to smoking, but it's very different. Smoking started like people were doing it because it was the cool thing to do. It's like back in like the 1980s, people were doing it because it was a cool thing to do. Vaping is kind of a cool thing to do, but it's also looked down upon a lot. Mm, it was, it was like mm. cool. It yeah. Was, yeah. It was like For a bit. Was like, um, so, and now, you know, it's kind of. You know, people are like you're weak if you vape, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, I think, I think is is like I th- I don't think I don't like say or condone like putting people down. Yeah, yeah I get what you but, mean. But it's it's a, good that yeah, it's good that it's not a thing that's cool anymore. Yeah, yeah you know it's I mean? it's not accepted. The kind same of thing, people yeah. saying that 
having an addiction to vaping is a weak part of your life is like the same people that might have an addiction to porn. I guarantee yeah. you, I guarantee everybody has an yeah. addiction. I like mean, every addiction is a weak part of your life. Yeah. No, no one should ever feel like that they are weaker than yeah. one another just mm. because they have something like wrong in their lives. Every single person has a flaw about mm. them and mm. you shouldn't be ashamed. And I feel like that, that was a hard thing for me to confess is because I got so ashamed by it mm. and I felt like it was making me weak um, that I was like, I don't know how I'm going to speak to people about yeah. this because it puts me down to a level where it's, it could ruin what people think of me. It's like yeah. the, the enemy is like isolating you yeah. and then you think you're the only one doing it. And yeah. in reality, like... And obviously... One in two people around you are doing yeah. it. Yeah. Like, and obviously, like, what people think of you isn't important, but it definitely, like, and even, like, what Gord thinks of you was, it was big as well. Like, I was like, I, I don't know how I'm going to speak to Gord about this. Obviously, he sees it all, but it, it can be hard to actually confess it and say it out loud. Mm. I've actually made this mistake and I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, like, I feel like we shouldn't ever put down people's weaknesses. And I've done it before. And I'm not saying the people that say, you know, just stop. They're not putting them down. They just don't, under, like... Uh, this might sound a bit rude, but they just don't understand what it's like when you're doing it. Mm. Because, you know, um, I mean, like, if I'm being honest, even now I'm like, some days if I have a bad day, I'm like, oh, I could, you know, I really want to have a vape mm. right now. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest, like, anyone that um, has struggled with an addiction like this, whether it's porn, anything like that, you know, vaping, drinking, yeah. um, when you have a bad day and those thoughts come into your head, it's one of the hardest things to battle, mm. in my opinion. Like in my yeah, experience, definitely. It, it happens when it's not going to happen when you're like at. I mean, it might, but it's unlikely yeah. to happen when you're when you're at your high and you're, at you're church consistently or speaking like, to at God. Church. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's so yeah. unlikely. It's going to happen when you're at like your alone league. or yeah. it's because that's when the devil strikes mm. as well. The devil strike you when you're not putting your shield up and where you're not getting... Like, I feel like God talks a lot about being ready. And mm. also, there's mm. a lot about in the Bible about being, like, um, like the, armoured in the, advance. If the um, if the owner knew what time the thief was coming, wouldn't he have oh, stayed? Oh, yeah. Same yeah. It's like that. It's like a lot of people um, feel like it, 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 it will jump at you. Like, it will mm. jump at you. Mm. Um, and people can struggle sometimes to be like... I don't know how to confess this. And I don't know what to do about this. Um, and but God has called us to be ready for it and yeah. to put the armor, as we said before, like um, the shield and the armor of God. And this is big complex of the armor of God, um, which is spoken all throughout the Bible. It's not always called the armor of God, but there's so many. The, the whole part of the Bible is different aspects of building mm. in mm -hmm. your relationship with God. Um, but with that. You have to be ready in advance. Mm -hmm. Like when yeah. you go into a war, they're not just going to go straight in the person. They will go through, you know, building their armies up and building, getting people advanced. Like every single day, people, they're still getting their soldiers ready for whatever mm -hmm. could happen. Mm -hmm. They're not just going to be randomly like, oh, you, 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 you get, on the, get out on the battlefield. They have to be ready. They have, have a to routine. be. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They have to have the things needed for when it does happen then they can fight the battle. Yeah. If you're not ready for the battle, you're not going to win the battle. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's like a lot of people think that, especially with porn addictions, oh, if I get a girlfriend, you know, oh, no. it'll stop. Mm. It's That's opposite. not true it's at all. It infects your relationship. Yeah, exactly. Because then you're like, mm. yeah, I'm not going to go into death. But mm. yeah. like, you know what I mean? I think you guys, yeah. speaking, if I'm being like 100% honest here, like speaking about lust, the, the most uh, when I struggle about it the most is when I don't read my Bible at night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's it's like the enemy the enemy is like trying to um, just do anything to get you away from God yeah. just just so he can like influence your life and uh, bring you away from him it's that like mm -hmm. vulnerable state yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah I feel like I want to move now into a more of a new topic I'm going to speak more about the world. So I have a lot of verses that I really want to get into. Mm -hmm. But um, I want to talk about being Christian. More like we obviously been speaking about being Christian in the world. But I want to speak about how do we actually live like a Christian, even when everyone else around us might not be living that way mm -hmm. or when everything around us might be calling us yeah. to something else. Um, I actually want to ask you, Seb, how do, how do you think in those situations we keep living for God when everyone is like, no, no, maybe just do this or maybe go and do that. Um, as well, I'll give it to you, Trent, as well, because, yeah, I would want to know the answer, yeah. Yeah, I think 
Well, there's a lot of like cliche answer that I could give, like, mm. or just just pray about it or something like yeah. that. Um, mm. But I'm trying to be like as honest as possible. I think maybe like just remembering and I think, I mean, yeah, praying about it is, is great. I'd say having a constant dialogue with God about it. Yeah. And like, he's there all the time. I mean, mm-hmm. he, so he sees, he sees like the struggle that you're going through. Um, and I, it might sound kind of weird, but I actually like, when it comes to persecution for my faith, I, it's kind of like an exciting thing. I don't know. It's, it's so hard to explain, mm-hmm. but it's like the, how the, you know, how the disciples, they're like joyful after they're being yeah. persecuted. Like, I feel like once once you have been persecuted, it could be like just even to the extent of being made fun of for your faith. Mm. Then then you know, like you're sacrificing something for your faith, mm. and it's it's so it's so much more worth it because I'm I'm sure the person making fun of you, even if they just don't understand, they're probably lost. I yeah, mean, definitely. And yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that I've noticed with like still. Like, living Christian... Because nothing you're going to do is going to pull you out of the world that you live in. Like, you're always going to live in a world that worships the world. Mm-hmm. Like, and as we yeah. said, the world is not stable. The world is going to do everything to pull you away from God because it's not perfect. Um, but the one thing it says in Matthew 6, verse 24, it reads, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be a slave to money. Um, and then you could do that to anything. You cannot serve God and be a slave to lust. You cannot be good. And um, you cannot serve God and be enslaved to absolutely anything. Um, when it says you can't serve two masters, it's we've spoken a little bit and dibbled out put into it a little bit before, is you can't be on a Friday or a Sunday worshipping and then on a Saturday or throughout the week doing whatever the heck you want. Mm-hmm. That's, ser- that's serving. You can't serve the world and you can't serve God at once. Mm-hmm. It's like, you can't, like when you're in class, you can't serve your teacher and then a teacher that's on the other side of the flopping school as well. I was, oh, I was on a good streak and I didn't say it. Hey, oh, you were no. so close. I think we got like, we got six more minutes. Jesse, <laughs> so, swearing is an addiction. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's saying like, you cannot serve two masters. You mm. have to serve God. If you're serving God, you will get persecuted. You will have people that hate you, as we've said before. Um, and it also says um, to not, you can't be conformed to the world. It says in Romans 12, verse 2, it says, Do not copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, as we said before. Mm. You have to change the way you think, and through that, you can only change the way you think by serving the master that created you, that yeah. is putting you on the journey to become a man of God. And the only way that you can be pushed away from the, the world and not follow the world, but live in the world is by serving the person that isn't of the world, which mm-hmm. is God. Yeah. yeah. And also like, especially when it said there, you can't serve two masters, right? I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not, if you're not serving God, they say as an example, uh, money's always a good example, I think. Yeah. But yeah. I think, what are you going to have when you're... I mean, even, even there's this thing where you, you want to get buy this thing and then when mm. you get it, you're like, oh, no, I want to I wanna buy this thing. And it just yeah. keeps like... Especially maybe... It can be anything. It can be a house. It can be yeah. a car. Because you, you can't love the world. You yeah. cannot it doesn't, it, love It's the world. never going to bring you satisfaction and mm. it's never... Um, maybe for like a short period of time, but it's never actually going to br- bring you peace. Yeah. The only person who can bring you peace is God. Mm. And yeah. I think... Uh, even when you're like 80 or 90 years old, mm. when you're like, what's the money going to do? Yeah, exactly. Like when you go to heaven, do you think you're really you're still going to have the currency you made on earth? Yeah. yeah. Or the Like your PlayStation isn't yeah. going to teleport up into Yeah, into, it's, into, not, it's not like you're just going to pull up in heaven like, oh, like, here's, heaven. here's everything <laughs> that I've ever made. Nah, it's, this stuff does not matter. Mm. Like everything in this life will build you up into what God has called you if you're living a life for Him. And when we say do not love the world, I feel like some people realize that... Um, lo- we, I feel like sometimes we self-consciously don't even actually really know we are loving the world. Sometimes oh, yeah. loving the world can be um, greed and can be ma- loving materialistic things like mm-hmm. uh, cars or your house or absolutely like your PS5 or absolutely anything. I mean, loving the world or even vaping. Or alcohol. I feel like sometimes it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, it says, Do not love the world, nor the things that offers you, as we said, the things that it's offering to us. 
For you, when you love the world, you do not only have the love of the Father in you. You do not have the love of the Father in you. Mm. So when you are, are just loving everything that the world is handing you, well, if it's on a silver platter or you're always after it, then you do not have the love that God mm. will give you if you trust in that and you have that love in Him. Yeah. It then says, For the world offers you only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anything, but anyone who does what God pleases will live forever. Mm. So everything that we have, everything, this podcast... All the equipment around us, all the clothes we're wearing is nothing. It's not going to mean anything when you die. But the things that you were doing for God that pleases God and the things that you were doing to pursue um, a life for Him will live on forever. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that's not just once you die. That is f forever, the eternity. The things you do on earth and in heaven and every single part of your life and into the eternal life will live on forever and i feel like sometimes we can we don't fully grasp the effect of forever like it is never going to well, end i don't think we can yeah like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah it's it's so good but trent what do you i want to ask you a question we do, do have like two minutes i'll be fine oh, it'll, oh, be really quick, really it'll be quick it'll be quick do you think that finding god helped you move away from not loving the world at first it wasn't. It was the people that I was hanging around because, you know, I started not to like them, which is probably God doing his thing. Mm. But um, I, I didn't consciously, when that was happening, realise yeah. that it was it was God. And then, you know, I became friends with you guys. Um, and then it kind of went from there. And then, um, so I would say back then, I didn't think that it was God. Like, consciously, I was like, I yeah. just don't like these people. So yeah. I'm going to go find some new friends. Um, and but I it definitely was God that brought all of us together because otherwise we wouldn't be doing yeah, this right now, bro. Podcast, yeah, like, yeah. bro, the arc to our kids is gonna be insane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the dad law, <laughs> the dad law, yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, definitely. Um, you know, now looking back on it, it's definitely it, it was God in that situation because mm. who else would it be? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's really good to to know that you're not alone. Um, yeah. Being a Christian in this and world. And thank you, Trent. Yeah, bro. thank Trent's you, been Trent. So, like, yeah, bro. bro. He's a perfect representation of being a Christian in the world and how that will change you and transform you. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to now pray for you guys. Yes. And I'd also like yeah. to pray for Trent. But um, I'll start now. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We are so grateful for this episode and what you have done. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will reach so many people, Lord, and that the people that see this will be really affected by this message, Lord Jesus, that you have poured into our lives. We're so grateful for Trent and that he was able to spread his testimony and everything that you have worked in him. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you continue to grow in him, continue to work in him and transform him, him as we continue to see you work in his life, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, we hope you had a really great time. Uh, Trent has something to say. How long, how long do we have? Quick. Nine seconds. Nine, Nine seconds. Be quick, be quick. Do we actually? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, real real quick though. So the end of my story ends with me finding God and yeah. um yes, starting Youth Alive sir. Academy. Shout yes, out to Youth sir. Alive Academy. Praise Jesus. Everyone, you got to pay Praise me for that Jesus. plug. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out to Youth Alive Academy. So um, good. shout out to Youth Alive. So so They've good. they've been a massive part of my walk mm. as well. So it's bedtime for you, Seb. But um. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, we'll see you guys, yeah, see you guys, we'll next, see you guys week. next time. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>